Hey guys, today what I'm going to have you do is learn the basics of creating an HTML page. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use the text editor I want you to use and a couple of the tags that you'll need to use in order to be able to create a basic HTML page and to enter um, the location information I asked you to collect for the project that we're going to be doing a little bit later. Uh, at any time, I want you to be able to stop the video and try things out, so don't feel like you have to watch it the whole way through. Um, whenever you see something you want to try, just pause, give it a try, and then come back. All right, so first thing I want you to do is uh, open up Notepad++. That's the text editor we're going to be using. Um, there is a link icon either on your desktop or if you type in Notepad++ down here, you'll see it. Um, it's a text editor just like Notepad or whatever comes with the Mac um, and you can use those instead but this has some kind of nifty features that um, I think make it worth using over those instead so open that up if at first it comes up with a change log or readme file the very first time then what you need to do is you need to go up here to new and click that and then just right click the old tab and hit close and then you'll have a nice blank uh, page to start writing on. So um, what you need to have an HTML page starts with the uh, skeleton. Now the reason why we call it an HTML skeleton is um, it's the frame that you put um, your web page on and much like a skeleton it has a head kind of up at the top and then a body down below it where the real meat of the site is. So uh, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the couple of tags you need to build your HTML skeleton, and then we'll start uh, building the site on top of that. It all starts with an HTML tag. Now, when I say tag, what I mean is the stuff between the uh, two pointy brackets here, the between the less than and the greater than sign. Um, so in this case, just HTML. So that tells um, Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer that this is an HTML page. When it sees HTML up there, it knows what to do with it. Now this is what you call an opening tag, and every open tag needs to have a close tag too. So I'm going to do that down here. Slash, when you put the forward slash in front of the tag, that means, all right, we're done with this, close it down. So the HTML tag comes first. And after that, we put in the head that I told you about. Now the head contains all sorts of information and most of it we probably won't get into today um, but um, we're going to put it in there anyway and I'll show you one of the things that can go in the head later. And then after that we will put in a body. Now you notice that for most of these tags that we're using today I am going to start that tag on one line and then put some space and then close the tag on a separate line all by itself. Uh, and whenever I create an open tag, I like to create a closing tag immediately so that I don't forget about it. And I think you guys should do the same thing too. So here we have the HTML tag, the head tag, closed head tag, the body tag. What we have right now is a perfectly solid HTML skeleton. But there's nothing in it. If I were to save this right now, you wouldn't actually be able to see anything. So I'm going to put this is my web page in here and then I'm going to hit the save button and I'm going to save it to the desktop so that I can find it and I'm going to type my page and then I'm going to make sure that I select save as type and I'm going to say I make sure that it's hypertext markup language or HTML here so that when I try to open it later um, it'll open as a valid HTML file. If you don't, if you forget to do that, it's going to be a .txt file and it won't open the same way. So notice right before I hit save, notice how this text looks right now. It's just regular text, but as soon as I save it as an HTML file, Notepad++ is going to slightly change the way it looks. So, so there we go. We've changed it to an HTML file, and now instead of having it just be plain and black, it's got these blue uh, things here and it's got these boxes that you can open and close so if I want to hide the body I can do that or if I want to hide the head I can do that um, and also if I click inside of the body tag here it's going to show me hey look you close that tag down here which is uh, kind of convenient and especially like let's say you forget to close a tag if I click up here and I don't have a close tag I go oh oops I forgot left that out better add that now it works so there you go. 
this is my uh, web page. I'm going to save it. And then just to test to see how it looks, I'm going to click Run and then Launch in Chrome. All of you have Chrome on your computer, so you should be able to do that without any problem. And then look, this is my web page. So I just created a web page. Pretty easy, right? So uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding some of the other stuff that you're going to need in order to be able to um, save all of the data that you're collecting because you're going to update this file every day for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a title and the title is just the, the thing up in the, the top of the um, window or the top of the tab that just says like, you know, welcome to the page. So let's do a title. I'll call it Mr. Mandel's page and oops, I want to put this on its own line. For all of these tags, I'd like you to um, have the tag and then the content and then the close tag. So just to see what that looks like, I'm going to run it and launch it in Chrome and see, look here, here's the title, Mr. Mandel's page. Now for everything else, I'm going to put it in the body. The body is where you put the content that you usually see when you visit a web page. So for instance, it's going to show you the text, it's going to show you images, it's going to show you links, all of the good stuff that you see in a page, it's usually, it's in the body. So I told you that I wanted you to put um, all of the data that you collected in this page and I want you to put it in a table. Uh, now tables can be fairly complicated, so I'm going to go through this step by step with you and then um, also give you a link to um, a site that should be able to help you if you run into any trouble. The first thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to create a heading um, that just says what this page is. The way you create a heading is with H and then a number. Uh, the primary heading or the, the heading at the very top should be H1. That's going to be the biggest one. And then everything underneath you know, you can make H2 or H3 different sizes. Um, some web experts say you should really only use one H1 and then for the rest you can use H2 or H3, but I'm okay with you experimenting. So I'm gonna say this is a data collection web page. That's my H1. And then for my H2, I am going to say um, all of my dates um, for the different um, days that I've collected data are going to be H2. So I'm going to say this is Thursday, October 3rd, because that's the first day I asked you to collect data. And then for another H2, uh, I'll move this a little bit further down here. I'm going to say this one is Friday, October 4th. All right. So now I have, let's see, I'm going to go to run and launch in Chrome. And now I have two headings, one for Thursday, October 3rd, another for Friday, October 4th. Now comes the part where I, I create a table to enter my data into. So uh, you, fortunately, it's pretty easy to remember that to create a table, you put in a uh, table. And then I'll close that table down here. There. So now I've created a table. Uh, and then this is where things get a little bit more complicated. First of all, um, for the table element, uh, for the table tag, you have to have a few different things. You have to create your rows, and then within those rows, you need to create um, the actual data within each column. So um, the first thing you do is you always create a row. And you'll notice that I hit tab so that I could kind of tell just by looking at it that the row is inside the table element. So to create a row, you type TR, and then I'm going to close that, TR. And then inside of the table row, you create, uh, for the, the column headers, I'm going to create table headers, TH. Now for the table headers and the table, table data, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to um, create the open and the close um, bits on the same line so that it's a little bit easier for you to find. So there's the open and there's the close. And in between those two things, I'm going to write my three headers. So the information I asked you to collect was location uh, that you went to, 
the time it took you to get there, and the distance from one point to the next. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, here is my table header for location. Here is another table header for time. And here is one for distance. And then if I save that and I run and launch in Chrome, there you go, location, time, distance. So that's my first row. In my next row, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create uh, or start entering the actual data that I collected. So here I'm going to do TD for table data, and I'm going to do it exactly the same way as I did it before. I'm going to type in what I uh, where I went. So my first location, that's the first column, is location. I went to QFC on Southeast Milwaukee. And how long did it take me to get there? Because time is the second column. It took me about 16 minutes. And the distance between those two places, according to Google Maps, between Grant and QFC is 6.3 miles. So let's save it. And I'll just reload this time. And you can see QFC on Southeast Milwaukee, 16 minutes, 6.3 miles. Uh, after I went to QFC, uh, I went to one other place, which is home. So I have to create one more row with data. And once again, I'm going to do location first. That's home. And home only took me three minutes to get there from QFC. And it took me, let's see, or it is 0 0.8 miles from QFC to my house. So I'm going to save that and run it and there you go qfc on southeast milwaukee 16 minutes 6.3 miles home three minutes 0 0.8 miles great the only thing that i think is left to do with this table is to make it uh, a little bit easier to read and i think that probably the best way to do that is to add an attribute now what an attribute is is it's um, kind of like an instruction that changes something about um, the particular HTML element. In this case, what I want to do is add most tags in HTML can add an attribute, and the table uh, tag is one of them. So uh, for table here, I can tell it that I want a border. So all I do is I type border equals and then one in quotes. Uh, putting that number in quotes is important. Um, if I save it, go to run, and I launch in Chrome, look at that. So here's what it looked like without the border. And here's what it looks like with the border. And if I change that from a 1 to a 5, you can see it makes the border around the outside a bit thicker. That's all. So there you go. I've got my first table. Uh, and if I wanted to do that for October 3rd, I would do it exactly the same way. But I would just enter in different information for this row and this row. And if I went to five places, I'd have to add more rows, right? Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. Now for the last thing I asked you to do, um, I asked you to write um, a description of what you did. Don't just give me the data, but tell me about it. And uh, I'll give you an example of my own day so that you can uh, see what I want out of you. Uh, in order to do this, what you have to do is you have to create a paragraph tag. And that's just a P um, for paragraph. And then in between uh, the open and close tags, you type what you want to type. You know, so uh, I went to QFC after school because I needed milk for cereal for breakfast the next morning. While I was at QFC, I bought a couple of top pot donuts because they looked good. I bought my groceries and then I headed home. So I'm going to save that and uh, I'll just refresh it. And here you see I've got my paragraph. Uh, now, if I were to add another paragraph, I do the same thing. And here's another paragraph. And uh, you'll see that. It puts some space between those paragraphs. That's part of the reason why you use the paragraph tag. Um, and 
that's it. That's all I want out of you for this time. Now, if you get finished before the end of the class, um, you might want to make things look a little bit nicer. Um, so what you might want to do is take a look at w3schools.com. Um, and what you're going to see there is this learn HTML link. You can go in here, and this can not only help you uh, with stuff that I haven't talked about here, but it can help you a lot with the stuff that I have talked about. For instance, this HTML tables link here will give you uh, all sorts of examples of how to create HTML tables. And if you say try it yourself with examples, you can click on this tables link here, and it's going to have instructions or um, basically a preset table HTML file with the results over here. You can edit that and type ha ah, and submit code and you can see that that actually changes. So this is a good way to not only see examples but try editing stuff on the fly and see if you can uh, make changes to it. Um, in addition to this file on tables it's also got a good section for introduction and basic um, if you want to try to make it a bit fancier, you can definitely do that. Um, and so go crazy, um, experiment as much as you can, but be sure that you save this file somewhere and upload it to um, to Edmodo by the end of the period. Best of luck, guys. Uh, let me know if you have any help. I'll be supply you with my comments uh, as soon as I see your work.